Okay, welcome back. Now that we have uh, established a sort of a base layer on the painting, in this one we're going to just add some complementary smart materials onto here. So it's sort of like a part two. Uh, and we're going to explore a little bit more into editing parameters of smart materials. And we're also going to go into how we can edit opacities through different channels in the different layer systems to give us some different kind of results that will help complement into this. So to begin with, I'm going to try to get things a little bit simplified and a little more cleaned up here. Uh, I'm going to create another folder within the red legs, red leg plates folder, and I'm going to shift left click these two and just drag within folder one. And since this was all stuff from part one, I'm just going to label it part one and just close that out so we can keep ourselves uh, nice and clean. And now from here, let's work with some smart materials and explore a little more what we can edit and explore different looks on what we can apply to our models and change it out from there. So to begin with, um, for this case, I'm going to go with a latex black in the smart material. And I'm just going to drag and drop right above there. And as you can see, because it's above, it's going to probably cover up most of everything with the exception of the uh, hexagon pattern. And that's because, again, it's part of that emissive channel. It doesn't add it here very well uh, or take crap from anybody, <laughs> that emissive channel. So we love the emissive channel. Anyways, as long as there's no other emissive channel that is above it that's set to black, it yeah, will probably always be there. Now, that's not exactly the look I want. It kind of looks cool in some way, and you could make some cool looking ideas further on, and that's sort of the point of why we explore is, is while this may not be the look you want, it may apply to a future look you might want to see. I'm probably going to now use the blending modes of the entire folder opacity channel in the layers section to give me some different results. Now to do that, I'm going to go to base color because that's the first thing I want to take away. I want to get some of that red back and I'm going to click where it says 100 and bring that all the way down and I can bring it all the way down and it will retain its full diffuse albedo diff color value, base color value. But I like the idea how black is sort of darkening out a little bit of the look. So I'm just going to kind of, it gives a little bit of a dark desaturated look. And I think I'm just going to go with that and uh, leave that in there. Now, as far as the uh, roughness goes, I actually like the roughness a little bit because I want to create roughness on the base of the layer that can contrast from shiny places I'm going to be putting further down the road in my texturing. It's sort of a principles of design concept that we're doing. So contrast a little bit. So for that, I'm going to try to disable the roughness, which pretty much turns the roughness off on all channels, which is a lot easier to do than go through all of these fill layers. So I'm just going to go to roughness, make sure it's set to that channel, and then tweak that down and we got everything else. You can still notice a difference between these two. I could have probably done this with just a black fill layer, but you know what? It's just easier sometimes to just drag and drop and see something and how it can help be something completely different by tweaking just two parameters in the process. Now, further on, I'm probably going to now add a little bit of dirt in here as sort of that finishing final touch before I add post texturing uh, effects to help contrast shiny specular info from dull info, uh, dull looking uh, metal. So to get there, I'm probably going to, before I do that, I'm going to work with another, the, the, another smart material, which is going to be dirt. And again, I'm just going to dr left click drag and bring that dirt just above the latex black and as you can already see that dirt is right there and I again this is why I wanted to do latex black and show you the different ways we could manipulate color and roughness 
we're going to now use that same concept, repetition and iteration of practice under different circumstances, while still constantly trying to explore the anatomy of the smart material. So again, this is really all about practicing. So let's go ahead and just open up dirt. It's not really a hugely long layout of fill layers, basically one with a bunch of attachments to it. And if the first thing that comes to my mind is, is I'd like to change the color of the fill layer. Now the color is being plugged in procedurally uh, through a uh, procedural texture. So I can't really manipulate color there. So I got to look somewhere else around here for the color. And it's probably not going to be in the mask because it's the only thing that's there is a mask generator. So I got to go back to clicking on this main face here and go through the finish grainy. There doesn't appear to be any attributes. And then I go down and look. Behold, gradient is our place where we want to mess with color. And now I'm just going to bring everything down. I'd like to actually work with some black. And like so. And that looks pretty good. And I'm happy with what I see. I'm going to just experiment with a little bit of the roughness value. And I'm okay with roughness being like that. So after I've done that, try to say to yourself, hey, it looks good, but why? what's holding you back from exploring a little bit more on it? Well, what, it's an opportunity to learn more a little bit on it. So that's kind of also why we're putting this on here. Let's learn a little bit more about dirt. So let's go and talk. To, we've already seen what gradient does. You know, it's basically a uh, color attribute that manipulate that you can manipulate color through. But what if I want more amounts of dirt uh, to go through there? So to do that, we have to go to the mask and the mask generator. And if we go down to the properties tab of the mask generator or bring it down here, you'll notice you have once again a whole bunch of different results. And again, as my instructor says, sometimes you just got to press buttons to know what they do. This is a blurring tool. It's just going to blur what's been masked. I honestly don't like it that much and it doesn't really serve me very much to uh, anything in any way. Uh, the global balance uh, is sort of a dictation of how much of this dirt you want to see on here. It's pretty helpful on here. Uh, curvature it takes advantage of the map, so the corners ideally should be uh, adhering to it. Looks like it didn't really uh, take too well in uh, this particular one. But uh, I'm going to work with, after seeing everything work, I'm probably going to work with global balance Global contrast just simply defines how contrast and hard the corner the ends are. At least that's what it's supposed to. <laughs> Sometimes uh, these parameters don't work and they're just kind of set in default. So I can probably get a little bit away with. Uh, probably around 0.92. And so now we got ourselves uh, quite a bit of dirt on there. Now, again, you may say, oh, wait a minute. This is way too much, man. This is like covering up the entire model. True. We can, we do have a model that we can cover up. But remember, you can go back and reapply everything you learned once again already. This may be in a folder, but you can put that in a folder or add a white mask or a black mask on there and just T uh, texture in where you want dirt to be. The other thing that we're going to be doing is, is I'm going to go back to my base color and manipulate the overall look of how much dirt is visibly being seen on here. And I can, again, I could probably do that uh, through here, but I always like to do it through the folder itself since it uh, uh, is the way to go because uh, I don't like anything at a maximum of 100%. So again, we can then just sort of create a new amount of texture that way. And again, if this is your choice, this is your model, your texturing, maybe you want to see a little bit more. Maybe you want to see a little bit more 
of the uh, foreboding textured pieces right here. Maybe you just want to see a little more shiny around here further down the road. That's your call. This is your model and it's your texture. So that's just going to be the way we're going to wrap up on part two. I'll put these two uh, little material pieces in their own folder. Yeah, hell, I'll do it right now, in fact. <laughs> and I'm just going to call that part two folder. And then on the next one, we're going to go ahead and see if we can work on the uh, part three of getting a little bit more of a contrast and specular information in all these areas. Add a little bit more fun to it with the plastic materials and etc. So stay tuned.